Hey, this is Saflevavi from LinkedInRef.com and it's time for another viewer request. And in this video, we're going to learn none other than Strawberry Fields by The Beatles. In a fingerstyle arrangement, I made especially for you guys and girls on request. First, I'm going to play it for you and then we're going to break it down lick by lick with tabs on the screen as usual. So first, it goes like this. Enjoy. Alright, so this has four parts in it. The intro, the verse, the chorus, and two alternate endings. Let's start with the intro, shall we? Um, you put on an A chord, okay? Just your normal A chord. Um, and you play strings, two and three together, and then the fourth string. And you do it twice. Then you turn this A chord into A major 7, meaning that instead of 2 on the 3rd string, you put on 1. So instead of 2, 2, and 2, you have 2, 1, and 2 on strings 2, 3, and 4. Okay? And you do the same thing, the strings 2 and 3, and then the 4th string twice. Then you take the finger off of the G string completely and you have A7, 2, 0, and 2, and you guessed it, you do the same thing. Okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. And then you put 2 on with your first finger, 2 on the fourth string, and 4 on the third string. Okay, this is kind of an E5 chord. And you play them. And then instead of four, you play three on the third string. Okay, so you have two and four, and then two and three. Okay, on strings four and three. Then you put on a B minor chord, but don't bar the second fret up to the fifth string. Bar it only up to the fourth string. Why? Because we're gonna do this sort of movement. Okay, we're not playing strings 1 and 5, we're only playing strings 2, 3, and 4, and that's why uh, you can bar it up to the 4th fret, it's a little bit more comfortable. So put on a B minor chord and play strings 4, 3, 2, 3, then take these three fingers off, leave the first finger for, uh, barring the second fret, and play strings 4, two, uh, four 3, 2. Okay, so, okay, and then uh, you don't stop, but you put these two fingers back on, uh, you put a finger on the third fret of the second string, a finger on the fourth fret of the third string, and you play two on the fourth string, then strings two and three, on three and four, then you take them back off again, 
and you play strings four and then two and three. Okay, so it's it's this. Again, B minor, A, and then you put these two fingers back on. It's two on the fourth string and three and four on strings two and three. And then you take them back off again. Got it? So that's the intro. A, A major seven, A seven, then this. While this is an E5 shape, technically, what we're playing here is an F sharp sus4 chord to F sharp. F sharp 7 sus4 to F sharp. It's this chord. Okay? We're gonna encounter it later on again, just so you know what you're playing. So, then B minor, A, and this little move. Okay, so uh, one last time, let me play it for you, and then we'll move on to the verse. Right? Um, actually, we're not moving on to the verse, we're moving on to the chorus, because um, the, the song starts with the chorus, and then there's the verse, so it's kind of a reverse order song. Um, so the chorus uh, goes like this, let me play it slowly. to listen to it then okay that's the chorus so you start with a D chord and you play this okay the bass the rest of the chord first string then first string again you hammer on two to three then the first string on two again then the second, uh, the second string on three, okay? It's all in the D chord except for three on the E string. Then on the third string, two, four, then strings um, one, then the second string on the third fret, okay? You can do it like this, but this creates a sort of harmony that uh, isn't supposed to be there. It's, it creates a D6 harmony and it's supposed to be D all the way and that's why I prefer okay, 2 and 4 instead of 2 and an open B string. Um, so, okay, 2, 4 on the 3rd string, open 1st string, 3 on the 2nd string. Okay? And then A minor. And you play strings uh, two, three, and five. You can play the fourth string with it. Okay, but if you play strings two, three, four, and five, it's kind of cluttered. That's why I prefer to give it a little bit of space and play strings two, three, and five. Okay, it sounds a little bit, a little bit more uh, lean. So, and then you do whatever sort of rhythm you want to do here. Okay, it's up to you. And then on the second string, one, three, open E string, then A minor again, but this time you pick strings um, three, four, and five. Okay, and then again, you complete the rhythm in any way you see fit, okay? Okay, or Okay, any rhythm you feel comfortable with. Okay, and then uh, at the beginning of the next bar, you put on 
your thumb on F sharp, on two on the E bass string, and you play A minor over F sharp, which is an F sharp uh, half diminished chord. Okay? You can call it A minor over uh, F sharp, you can call it F sharp half diminished, you can call it F sharp minor 7 flat 5, it's all the same uh, notes. So, you play the bass, then again you play the chord in any way you see fit, and then uh, on the second string, 1, 3, 4. Now I like to slide down from the fourth string just as an embellishment. You don't have to, you can do this. Okay? I like to slide down so I do this. Okay? I use uh, my second finger, I slide down right down to the first string and then put on B7 and the melody note is two on the third string and you can either play strings uh, 3, 4, and 5 or you can play the 3rd string then the A string on 2 as your bass note and then uh, again complete the bar in any way you see fit so okay any, any rhythm that you see fit you can make it more rhythmical, you can make it less rhythmical, you can just play the chord and wait. Okay, it's up to you. Make your own arrangement of this. Take what I teach you and make your own interpretation. Uh, be creative. Um, find a rhythm that's comfortable for you. So what we had so far is this. D. It's G, it's a G chord with a solo on the first string, that's why I prefer using the thumb for the G bass, 3 on the E bass string, and I play 5, 3, 2, 0 on the E string, then I have all my fingers free for that. Um, okay, and you can harmonize with the second and, uh, and third strings. Okay, 5, 3, 2, 0. Okay, now if you use fingers, use the second finger for the bass and then you have these three fingers. Okay, I think the thumb kind of frees up the hand. And then this. You put on two on the A string, you put on four on the B string. Okay, this is a B major third. And then you don't bar it yet. You play it without a bar. You play the open E string. Then you bar and you play two on the E string. Okay? Okay, so that's this. Uh, so together, it goes like this G and B. And then, of course, you can complete the bar in any way you want or just leave it at that. or play the bass again. That's enough sometimes to create a rhythm. And then the final line. Okay. You put on two, three, and four on strings one, two, and three, and G on the bass, three on the E bass string again with your thumb or like this. Okay, with your second finger. Okay, whichever is more comfortable for you. I prefer to use the thumb again because it frees up the rest of the fingers. So you play strings one with six, then the second string, then the third string. Okay, this is G major seven. Uh, and then you play these three notes again. Uh, no, sorry, you play strings uh, one and two again with the A bass, this time along with the first string. And then two on the third string, 
uh, open E string with open D string. Then you put on three on the third string. Be careful not to touch the E string, or you can put it there right at the beginning. So it's. Um, yeah, I, I prefer to put two and then add the three, but you can put this uh, half of the D shape um, at the same time if you want. So we had two on the third string, open first and fourth strings then three on the second string. I like to harmonize it with the third string, okay, to create a chord sound. So, G major seven, G major seven over A, D. Actually, it's, um, it's D sus two because you have an open E string. So, D sus two at the end, G major seven, G major 7 over A, D sus 2. That's the chorus, so let's go over it again. D. A minor. F sharp bass. B7. G. B. strings one and two again if you want for emphasis and then G major 7 over A D sus 2 okay so one last time uh, without me talking for the verse. The verse starts with the same movement that starts the intro. A, A major 7, A7. Seven. But this time you play it like this. And then, remember when I told you that this was F sharp 7 sus 4 to F sharp 7? That this time you do play it as an F sharp 7 sus 4 to F sharp 7. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. And then, remember that in the intro you did this? Okay, you do it again, B minor, B minor over A, this time with a melody. So basically you're playing the intro chords in a different way. So, A, and you play strings one, two, three, and five, and then you play the E string tw twice more. So, then you play A major seven and you do the same, uh, the same sort of thing. I say sort of thing because there is kind of a syncopation there. I'll talk about it in a second. Then A seven and you do the same thing. Now the syncopation thing is that you play the chord first before the bass note. So first time is with the bass note. Second time you play the chord and then the bass note. Then the third time you do the same thing. Okay, chord, bass, chord, chord. Um, or just the E string. I harmonize all the notes. Um, but that's just my choice. You can do something completely different. Um, but you can play the bass notes with the chords if you want to. Uh, again, it's up to you. creates a different sort of feeling for the lick. So you can choose either way and play it the way you see fit. You can also arpeggiate the chords if you want. Okay, it can work as well. And then you put on this um, bar on the second fret, pinky on five on the second uh, string, uh, third finger on four on the uh, third string and you have the uh, fourth string 
on two. It's the bar. This is. This is. F sharp seven sus four. This is the seventh note. This is also the seventh note. And this, the four on the third string, is the sus four sound. So you play all four notes. You play strings uh, two, three, four, and six. Then instead of four on the third string, you put on three. Okay, you take this finger off, you replace it with the, uh, the second finger on three on the third string. This makes it a major note. So this time it's F sharp seven. Okay. You can play the whole chord, you can play just the note. Okay, again, up to you. You can arpeggiate it. Okay, there are many choices. You do what seems and feels right to you. Um, and then this. B minor, you play the bass, then you play strings uh, two and three, three times. Then you take the bar off and put two on the first string, you play this. You play strings one, two, three, and five. The open fifth string is the A bass, this is B minor over A. Then on the second string, three, two. Okay, so. Then you put on the G bass, you play strings one, two, three, and six. And then on the second string, three, zero. You can pull it off, you can play it, you can, um, okay, you can harmonize it the third string you can just pick it okay again choices and then still on G the bass on the second string zero zero three you can harmonize it with the third string then a and you play strings two three and five you play the open second string third string on two, two on the first string, okay, so you have, okay, you can pull off two on the second string if you want, okay, for more um, fluency, for a more legato feel, then this, okay, this is D, Actually, technically it's D5, then D over C sharp, then B minor. So use these two fingers for strings uh, three and two on three and, uh, no, strings two and three on two and three, okay? Or strings two and three on three and two, okay? Just these two fingers and you play strings uh, th two, three, and four. Then the second string twice more. You can harmonize it with the third string. Then you take the first finger off, you leave three on the second string, you put four on the A string, you play strings one and four. Now, why do you leave this note on? To keep it ringing. Okay, so this note keeps ringing to the next chord. And because you need it now. Okay, so why take it off? After you do this, you take the finger off of the A string, you put a bar on the second string, you prepare a B minor chord, and you put you prepare four uh, B minor chord, you pull off three to two on the second string, then you put on the rest of the chord and you play strings for uh, three, four, and five. Okay, a B five. Uh, but you played this, so for the ear, it's B minor. So, okay, got it? The, the first uh, and second fingers, third finger and second finger, first finger and second finger, all the fingers, okay? 
You can also play the second string here again, okay, as a high note harmony. Okay? Works as well. If you want. Uh, it's just my style for some reason to harmonize with the lower notes. Don't know, just got used to it. But you can harmonize with higher notes as well. You can also play the, mm, the first string if you want. Um, Okay, it works. Um, just remember that this is your melody note. And then this. Okay, so here it is. Um, G. Um, you can do a variation. The, the original melody is 3-3-3 three, three, three on the second string. Again, harmonizing with the third string. Um, but I like to play 0, 0, 3 because it creates a little bit of diversity. Okay? Doesn't really matter. Uh, 3, 3, 3 or 0, 0, 3. It leads to A and you play the chord, strings 1, 2, 3, and 6. Then 3, 2, 3 on the second string. G. Okay? Uh, this leads into G. You can play the chord in any way you want. Then D. Okay, and then you're back to the chorus. So what I like to do is I like to skip the last D chord and just play the chorus again and that way the verse connects with the chorus. I like to do this. and start the chorus right away. That's not how it's done in the original song. The original song ends the verse on D, wait a second, and then starts the chorus on D. Um, so again, up to you, your choice. Um, I forgot to mention that after you do G, you play the bass, then you play strings two, three, and uh, four, three on the second string still, and then D, okay? But that's just my way to do it. Uh, that's just my way of doing it, and uh, you can make your own version of this. Let's go over the chorus again. A, A major 7, A7, seven, uh, and then F sharp 7 sus 4 to F sharp 7, B minor, B minor over A, G. It's G6, then G again. A, D, over F sharp, uh, uh, F sharp, over C sharp, B minor, uh, and then G, or A, D, no, sorry, G, this is confusing, D, and you start again. Now. You play the chorus again and you have uh, options for alternate endings. I use two alternate endings here. Remember that the ending is this. Um, the first alternate ending is this. Right, this is the first alternate version. Um, you play the G major 7 and G major 7 over A the same uh, way you did. And then you play 2 on the 3rd string and then you slide it from 2 to 4 with the D string and then 7 on the 3rd string. Okay? And keep the D string ring. Okay? That's one way to do it. And the second alternate ending is this. Okay? You can also play it like this. Okay, but I think it's um, unnecessary. So, G major 7. Then A with 5, 3, 2 on the A string. I just barred the 2nd fret for the rest of the A chord, okay? But 
you do it if you want to. I think this is enough uh, because it's supposed to be gentle. And then the same uh, ending of the original line. Okay, open, uh, it's D sus2, open first and sixth strings, then strings two and three on three and two. So. Two hammer on to three, pull off to two. Okay, that's up to you. Okay, to embellish. And that's Strawberry Field. Before you go practice this, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. There's a ton of lessons for you to learn, and I accept requests as this one was. And um, go download the tab. The link is in the description below. The tabs are also for free. Everything on Lake and Riff is for free. But if you want to help out and give something back, there's a large blue donation button above the tabs on the website. You can click it and donate whatever you want and help out. It all goes right back into making the lessons, making the arrangements, working on them, practicing on uh, practicing, playing them and, you know, teaching you how to play them. It all takes time and work, editing the lessons, uploading them, you know, it all takes time and effort. So if you want to help out, I'd be more than grateful for your donation. In the meantime, you go practice this, get it on your fingers, make your own arrangement of this, be creative, and have fun. That's the most important thing. Have fun with your guitar, enjoy, and I'll see you the next lesson. Thank you very much for watching.